Good morning, everybody. Happy Tuesday. We have an amazing show for everybody today. What do we have, Crystal? Indeed, we do. Uh, lots of interesting stories unfolding this week. So first of all, we have a White House response on uh, the latest with regards to these mm -hmm. UFOs and whatever is going on there. Also, some really amazing excuses for why they have been unable to, supposedly unable to, retrieve any of the debris. So we'll break all of that down for you. Also, uh, some warnings to Americans who are in Russia that they need to get out and get out now. Uh, why is this coming at this moment? Uh, we will take a look at that. Also, uh, just breaking uh, in the last several hours, another train derailment, this one outside of Houston. We have all of those details for you. Also, Pete Buttigieg, of course, Secretary of Transportation, continuing to fail at his job. Uh, new details about Jared Kushner and the way he cashed in on his government position, what that means going forward. Uh, Elon Musk and Starlink and Ukraine uh, updates there. We also have Jeremy Corbell in the show to talk about what is going on with these UFOs as well. And breaking this morning, yes. Get excited, guys. Nikki Haley has officially launched for president. Uh, Sagar and I are going to yes. take a look at her announcement video, react live we'll for you. We'll give you our full reaction. People <laughs> made fun of us for saying 2024 is fully upon us. What did I try to tell you? We tried to tell you. Whether All right, we it's like February it or not, 14th. Yeah, it's exactly. Here. It is <laughs> here. So let's start with UFOs, my personal favorite topic. Extraordinary conference yesterday at the White House with uh, the press secretary, Karine Jean-Pierre, opening up the actual address to the press and saying that there is no evidence of extraterrestrial life. Then you had uh, John Kirby, the national security a spokesperson for the White House and for the Pentagon take the podium and deliver some more details about these three UFO incidents. Let's take a listen fully to what they said. There is no, again, no indication of aliens or extraterrestrial activity with these recent takedowns. Again, there is no indication of aliens or terrestrial activity with these recent takedowns. Wanted to make sure that the American people knew that, all of you knew that, uh, and it was important for us to say that from here because we've been hearing a lot about it. Um, I, I, I'm not... Would you tell us? I'm just, you know, I loved E.T., the movie, but I'm, I'm just just going to leave it there. In light of the Chinese balloon program and this recent incursion into our airspace, the United States and Canada, through NORAD, have been more closely scrutinizing that airspace, including enhancing our radar capabilities, which, as the commander of NORTHCOM and NORAD, General Van Herc, said just last night, may at least partially explain the increase in the objects that have been detected. There are no active tracks today, but the professionals at NORAD will continue to do their important work. We don't know what this exactly looked like, and again, we're still not sure exactly what what, it, what the purpose of it was or who owned it, but we, we hope to be able to find out more once we can recover the debris from that one and from the other two as well. A couple of things that we could take away from that. Number one, I'm just disgusted by my former colleagues um, in the press who are laughing at this. And it's like, look, yeah, I get that it sounds extraordinary. But shooting down three things for the first time in U.S. history over U.S. airspace is also extraordinary. Your job is to not laugh, but it's to take it seriously. At the very least, just, you know, do your job. Maybe a follow-up question. Maybe uh, ask the question, as we have seen, if you'll remember, Crystal, the very first UFO report that came out, the press spun it as government finds no evidence of aliens. But you read it, and it's like, yeah, but they didn't find any evidence that it's not. The evidence right. is they have no idea what's going on. And if, as, as you listen throughout that entire briefing, you're like, oh, they still have no clue. It's been more than 72 hours now since the first uh, UFO was shot down. We have no debris recovery, no update on allegedly. debris recovery. Allegedly. Yeah, allegedly. And we're going to get into <laughs> some of that. And one of the reasons why is We've seen a flurry of leaks that have come out where you have Pentagon, Canadian officials specifically, and the Pentagon is having a briefing today, actually just a couple of hours from when we're talking around right now with all U.S. senators. It's a classified briefing. The memo of that briefing has gone ahead and leaked. And what they say is they will, they believe at least in the Canadian instance, it was a small metallic balloon. So first of all, what does metallic balloon mean? Um, second, uh, what basis do you have for that information? But when you read deeper, the debris recovery effort in all three of these cases, they are setting it up to look extraordinarily unlikely. And one of the other reasons why we should be skeptical, at least of this initial explanation, again, here's the thing, I think it probably is likely balloons, but we can't just take them at their word for it. We have to go back to the original briefing of the NORAD commander that was during the Super Bowl, where he very specifically laid out, I am not calling them balloons for a reason, I am calling them objects, and it was based on the initial description of these objects from the pilots themselves. Just take a listen to what he said then. 
I'm not going to categorize them as balloons. We're calling them objects for a reason. Uh, certainly the event off the South Carolina coast uh, for the Chinese spy balloon, that was clearly a balloon. These are objects. Uh, I am uh, not able to categorize how they stay aloft. It could be a gaseous uh, type of uh, uh, balloon inside a structure, or it could be some type of a propulsion system. But clearly, they're... Uh, they're able to stay aloft. I would be hesitant to, and urge you not to uh, attribute it to any specific country. We don't know. This is the big divide we have here. This NORAD commander, he is the one who, frankly, has been the most honest. He was like, look, I'm not ruling out anything whenever it comes to aliens. He goes, number one. Number two, I'm not calling them balloons for a reason. People in a more classified setting have been trying to say that. But what we are watching right now is a concerted effort and all three de debris recovery efforts to set the stage where they're like, look, it's likely that we'll just never get them. So my personal favorite, which you found, let's yes. put this up there on the screen from the Detroit News, uh, Representative Elise Alyssa Slopkin, who is a former CIA spook, just so you all know. She says that the shot down object is likely in very deep water. And actually, they changed that headline because originally they said, well, the recovery of the shot down object in Lake Huron is hampered by, quote, choppy waters. Now, <laughs> I did go ahead and check because it, it did sound pretty incredulous to me. There were some choppy waves out there on the lake yesterday, but they keep changing their story. First, it was, oh, well, the weather is bad in Alaska and the Yukon. Okay, you know, that's reasonable. You know, it's the winter, et cetera. But then all of us are checking the weather over Lake, lake Huron. It's like 48 degrees and sunny. So we're like, okay, well, are you going to go out and get there? No, no, now it's choppy waters. Like, okay, uh, now what? So what about when the weather's not, or when the water's not choppy? They're like, oh, but now it's a very, very deep. <laughs> it's a deep water. And you're like, oh, oh I, I was aware, I was under the impression that we spent $800 billion a year on the U.S. military and that, you know, that in the 1960s like, that we've literally floated up Russian submarines with Howard Hughes. Like, I was just under, you know, the impression that we were a competent nation. Uh, we excuse were, me. Came excuse me. Dealing with choppy yeah. water. Yeah, <laughs> choppy water. Uh, again, maybe. Now, here's the other thing. I read even deeper, Crystal, and yeah. the Canadian officials are now doing the same thing. So get this. The uh, Canadian Defense Ministry put out a background statement last night, and they were like, hey, look, you got to prepare yourself for, we're never going to find this thing mm. in the Yukon. And it's like, oh, okay, why? And they're like, well, the search radius is 3,000 uh, miles wide. Why? You know, in a, yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> That's I a mean, good question. Yeah. We shot it down. Right. We know where we shot it down. Uh, could it yeah. really have drifted 3,000 I mean, miles? Okay, Come let's on. let's say, you know, what did we learn after 9-11, you know, with the whole, or when people were looking at the debris radius in terms of a couple hundred miles, you know, reasonable, but 3,000? Well, why exactly is it 3,000? Don't we know exactly when it went down? And, you know, once again, like, I was uh, under the impression, excuse me, of a very sophisticated military equipment, which is capable of putting a Hellfire missile literally in the passenger side of a car, something I've literally seen um, happen from my days of covering the defense industry. So, uh, for you know, that that begs a little bit of belief. But sec first of all, same thing. He goes, you should prepare yourself for, we may never find it. And then on the Alaska UFO, it's the exact same thing. The weather is bad. I checked the weather is, it's like freezing temperature in the uh, Aleutian Islands. It's like 33 degrees. It has been snowing, you know, undeniably like low, lower light conditions. Sure. But you know, once again, you know, see, we do have military assets to fly up there all the time. And, and you know, once like, don't we have unmanned assets? Like, can't you go and snap a picture? With the Chinese balloon, we had a video of it happening in the sky, number one. Number two, within two hours, you had a video of people literally Cover pulling it up. Already, DOD has released even more of what has come out from the Chinese balloon of Navy, uh, Navy divers and others who are recovering some of this. In all three now of the UFO cases, they say, oh, they're preparing the ground for, we're never going to find it. Uh, and they want you to forget about it. I, I honestly it. think that's what's happening. That's it. They, wanna, they want yeah. you to run out the clock right. so that people move on to whatever is next and we forget about the fact that i mean listen if it was one you know the one over the aleutian islands or whatever and they're mm -hmm. like listen I, it's it's tough out there eh, okay maybe but all three after we literally just saw you have no trouble whatsoever getting the chinese spy balloon like i'm sorry i just don't believe it yeah, i just no, don't believe you. it the idea and listen i saw uh because you tweeted about the Alyssa yeah. slot kid yes, Waters yes. thing, and i saw yeah. kinds of people blow like you don't get it like yeah. you're on it really does right. get crazy out there it's like okay i believe you but yeah. Also, really, the United States military is unable to deal with choppy waters. Mm -hmm. I just don't. I just don't buy it. I do not buy it. So, 
I also think it's interesting that the one piece of information that they did allow to leak out, and make no mistake about it, it was allowed to leak out, is um, the piece from this memo about what they think yes. the one over Alaska ultimately was, which is like the most, like, everybody calm down, it's just a, another balloon, nothing to see here. But again, if they knew these were all balloons, if they had specific information about what was going on here, and it was, you know, nothing really to see here, some corporate balloon or whatever, which is something that they floated that, like, some mm -hmm. it could be some corporate yeah. company balloon. Or well, whatever. then why didn't the company come out and say it? Yeah, okay? then, I like, mean, they would tell us that. Right. If it was something that was as, as little or as insignificant as that, ultimately. So I don't know what's going on, but I definitely know that we are not getting the full story of what they know and what they've been able to accomplish. Here. Not even close. And and uh, let's put this up there on the screen for the next one. You know, we already have here ex-NORAD commander saying that the UFOs are a, quote, concerted effort uh, to test out outdated systems. He might be right. But the more important one is the headline, we still have not recovered any debris from the three that were shot down over the weekend. And the Secretary of Defense, Lloyd Austin, actually talked about that on a trip. The audio is a little weird because he was speaking right outside of an airplane. But we're going to play it for you. Let's go ahead and take a listen. Because we've not been able to definitively assess what these recent objects are. Uh, we've acted out of an abundance of caution to protect the secu uh, our security and interest. And that's why we have teams working hard to track down the debris from over the weekend. Got teams working hard, but we still haven't been able to do it. Okay, maybe. And you know, some of the stuff that's coming out about these initial encounters are pretty crazy. Let's go ahead and put this up there on the screen. So last night it broke from uh, Lucas Tomlinson. He's a great Pentagon reporter. I remember him from my days there. He says, quote, the U.S. Air Force F-16 that shot down the unknown object over Lake Huron yesterday missed on its <laughs> first attempt. It's not clear where the first missile landed. A second Sidewinder air-to-air -air missile was needed. Each Sidewinder AIM-9X costs over $400,000. So... I asked some of my aviation geek friends about this, and there were a couple of things that we can learn. Number one is uh, the indication of using this missile means that the actual object had a heat signature, because apparently it can't lock on unless there's a heat signature. Okay. Second, though, uh, they don't miss. That's why we spend 400 grand a missile on them. Do balloons um, have a heat signature or no? I don't know. I don't know. So that was one of the, I said, well, they said depends if it's a propulsion system, et cetera. Okay, so Dep maybe. Maybe. Okay. Uh, that one was totally unclear. But really, to me, was, well, did it have the ability to maneuver away from it? Like, did it dodge it? I mean, the whole point is the, we spend the equivalent of a house per missile, and we have 110,000 of these missiles in our arsenal, by the way. Uh, why do we have them? Because they're very accurate. They go all the way back, I believe, until the 1950s that we keep engineering for, it's considered like the gold standard um, for the U.S. Air Force. And specifically, the fact that they missed a lot of people were raising questions about that. They were like, wait, does that mean that, uh, first of all, we remember that some of the pilots had talked about how the sensors were jammed. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if people know this, but actively jamming radar is act is an act of war um, under our rules of engagement. So that means, if that's what happened. Uh, they said sensors, they didn't necessarily use the word radar. But I am taking a lot of interest here in these pilots I looked it up. It's, we spent $6 million just to train a pilot. The aircraft itself, who knows how many tens of millions of dollars the aircraft is. It costs $30,000 per flight hour and $400,000 per missile. Like, these are sophisticated pieces of military equipment. And they don't miss all that often, specifically for this reason. So that's pretty extraordinary. The, it's extraordinary that it missed. Could be human error. I mean, could be. Although, you know, I think we spend house per missile so that you don't have human error in these situations. All you really have to do is lock on and press a button. But it, I guess it technically could have been a misfire. But then why are we spending $400,000 per yeah. missile anyway? So I have a lot of questions about this one. I mean, I guess if I was going to try to get into, like, you know, what the excuse yeah. could be. I remember before the Chinese spy balloon was shot down, there was a lot of analysis of, like, yeah, actually, it's more complicated to, mm. like, take down a balloon than you think it is because of the altitude and because it's a different size what, or whatever. Don't work at 60, so feet. maybe yeah. it's because these aren't designed to take down balloons. Sure. That's yeah, possible. maybe possible. But um, this whole portrait is either one of a gigantic cover up or just like an embarrassing display of mass incompetence and like mm -hmm. revealing how, you know, before Russia invaded Ukraine, everyone was like, oh my God, the Russian military, whatever. And then mm -hmm. once they did invade Ukraine, it was like, yeah, this still isn't all that it was really cracked up to be. <laughs> 
I'm getting some of those vibes here. It's either, like I said, either there's a lot that we're not being told, which I think is very possible, if not likely, or we are much less competent than what we think and what we ultimately portray to yeah. the world. It's one of those two things going yeah. on here. Uh, and by the way, combination of both, <laughs> most, most there, likely. But, yeah, I, that's true too. I that's think a it's a combination well. of both. I mean, one thing I know is that we are being spun uh, as much as possible. And they are, look, without a doubt, I read you those three separate quotes that they gave about debris recovery. They are setting it up so that it, it'll either be weeks before you get something or they're just gonna say that we never found anything at all. My entire monologue today, by the way, is about the history of UFO cover-ups, about Roswell and all of that, and exactly why I am so skeptical in all of this, because the longer you wait and the longer you you know, uh, have for them to possibly fabricate evidence, come up with a new story and all of that, it's just like the early days of many of the UFO I wonder, you know yeah. how the explanation is like, okay, after the Chinese spy balloon, then we recalibrated yes. the radar so we're more sensitive and we're like looking at these higher altitudes, et cetera, and looking for things that are as small as a car. I wonder if they're going to recalibrate them so that they can just okay, pretend right. like none of this is happening again. <laughs> just like, yeah, yeah, we, yeah we're good. That's the whole point. Away. And that's no. exactly what you know, UFO people have been saying this whole time. They're like, you have no idea what's up there because you're not looking for it. It's like the, uh, you know, there. I was reminded of the scene from The Hunt for Red October where there's the new submarine and the sonar system doesn't know how to code the submarine. They're like calling it deep sea noises because they'd never heard the noise before. Mm. So how is your, your equipment is only as good as you know to what to look for. If you're not yeah. looking for anything, then you can say that you've never seen anything before. And that for, luckily they had human ingenuity um, as that character in the movie, Jonesy, great character, uh, who was like, no, there's actually something else going on here. Well, you know, we've had that now. We've had multiple Jonesies and pilots and uh, Ryan Graves and David Fravor and man, many others, a Tic Tac uh, pilot as well, I believe he was on TV um, last night. All of these people are the highly sophisticated war fighters, people who've flown thousands and thousands of hours. Like you really, and as Tom Rogan said, if you believe that they're mentally unsound to make up a UFO story, why did we leave them in charge of these highly expensive, multi hundred million dollar aircraft in charge of supporting US troops and bombing enemy mm. targets? Completely incredulous you know, for us to believe that. I think the last thing that I want to say on this, yeah. this morning there's a lot of discussion of like, is this a PSYOP to distract right. from something else, train right. derailment or whatever, Ukraine, who knows? Um, and the reason I don't think so is because I don't think they would do something that was like so embarrassing for them. Like this does not look good for them. Yeah. They're not enjoying this. <laughs> like it's humiliating. Yeah. They're having to pretend or per potentially like, <laughs> I guess, be honest about, but I don't mm. really buy it, that they can't even get the debris from these things and they have no idea what's going on. Like this has not been a good look for anyone in charge of the military or in this administration. So um, yeah, I think it's uh, incompetence. I think that the media would be happy to ignore the train derailment and any other number of stories. They do it all the time without needing some like giant UFO type PSYOP. So that's why I'm really not sort of buying that explanation for what's going yeah, on. Yeah, look, I personally think the most mid take on the internet is that this is all a PSYOP. Um, and it's largely because, as you said, like they hate that they have to do this. They and by by the way, they're going out of their way to try and keep it out of the news as possible to keep everybody calm down, which is all it fits very well with UFO history, of which I will get into. So we'll leave it at that. We'll tease um, for Sagar's mom. Yeah, that's right. We'll, we'll leave it at that. Uh, but let's just say all of this is straight out of the playbook. Hey guys, ready or not, 2024 is fully upon us now, and Sagar and I have been brainstorming ways that we can really up our game for this critical election. Yeah, we rely on our premium subs to expand our coverage, to add staff, to upgrade the studio. We just want to give you the best independent coverage of this election, which is possible. So if you can help us out, become a premium subscriber today, breakingpoints.com, or the link is down here in the description video. It really means the world to us, and if you like what we're all about, this is the best possible way to keep us 100% independent, working only for you.